John Strickland. This webcast is one of a series in which I'm presenting some brief lectures and commentaries on topics from the courses I teach in Literature and Cultural Studies. This particular installment is the second in a series on Joseph Conrad's novel, Heart of Darkness. In the earlier video, I spoke about the novel's representation of colonialism and its discontents. Here I'll relate Conrad's novel to the emergence of new paradigms of thought, such as Sigmund Freud's psychoanalysis and the revolutionary scientific theories of Albert Einstein and others. These new scientific theories coincide with a general fin de siècle malaise, a crisis of confidence in Western values felt among artists and intellectuals like Conrad. Now, so this leads to, in the later 20th century, the concept of the social construction of reality. Freud enters in, uh, in his interpretation of dreams and in his psychopathology of everyday life, 1900 and 1901, respectively. Freud's works illustrate in an especially vivid way his evolving theories about the influence of the unconscious mind and past experiences, especially childhood experiences on everyday life. Things that we're not even really quite aware of that may bubble up in our dreams, but have a locus, have a source in the communal consciousness of the societies in which we are raised, filter into our minds while we're not really paying close attention, not actively learning, only passively absorbing. These things Freud noticed have an effect on how we act. So we're not exactly free agents. That's in contrast, by the way, to an idea that Milton might have wanted to assert in Paradise Lost, or that Shakespeare would assert in Hamlet, that Rene Descartes would be asserting when he said, I think, therefore I am. And it's related, in a way, to the questioning of Newtonian physics, um, Einstein's special theory of relativity. In Einstein's theory, dealing with motion, and later in the general theory of relativity, dealing with gravity, Einstein shook the traditional understanding of the universe and our relationship to it. So the uncertainty of Einstein's universe was seemingly reinforced by developments in quantum physics, such as in the works of Werner Heisenberg, the author of the famous Uncertainty Principle, and the Principle of Complementarity, all of which assert that the movement of subatomic particles can only be predicted by probability and not measured precisely. So, just at this time, intellectuals and writers were connecting these dots. And the editors, Kevin Dittmer and Julie Wick, the editors of our anthology, they write, the modern writer was faced with an enormous Nietzschean task to create new and appropriate values for modern culture and a style appropriate to those values. As a consequence, there's often a probing nervous quality in the modernist explorations of ultimate questions. This quality can be seen at the very start of the century in Conrad's Heart of Darkness, a novel about psychological depth and social disintegration that simultaneously implicates its readers in the moral ambiguities of its events. These ambiguities, moreover, are reflected in the very presentation of the narrative itself. In the modern novel, we are no longer allowed to watch from a safe distance while our protagonists mature and change through their trials. Instead, we are made to undergo those trials ourselves through the machinations of the narrative. Okay, the point here is, in the modern novel often, even in its structure and the way it engages the reader, it doesn't give the reader a comfortable, safe, space to stand on and observe the protagonist learn how to be a mature grown-up. The critiques of Karl Marx, Marx's critique of the notion of agency and individualism in Cartesian thought, the members of the workforce, which Marx had called alienated labor, were seen to be estranged not just from their work, but from one another as well, as they themselves became 
mass products. This situation is dramatized, especially vividly, in the silent films of the 1920s, from the dystopian vision of Fritz Lang's Metropolis to the more comic vision presented by Charlie Chaplin in modern times. So industrialization, urbanization, new developments in science, the breakdown of traditional religious communities, the breakdown of local communities. This was already happening in the late 19th century, and it has accelerated to the point at which now, in our lifetimes, we've seen smartphones, now the Internet of Things, and it's easy to see how those technological changes promote the fragmentation of community, how they change what it means to be human. Even in 10 years or so, it has been going on for 500 years. With that, I'll conclude for now. I'll have more to say about Conrad's Heart of Darkness in a subsequent video. As always, if you have questions or comments, send me an email. Thank you.